why not to buy a Jeep Compass even though they look cool. No one has to admit they're cool looking vehicles. There's no arguing that. They got a nice look to them. Now this particular one is a 2017. So it's three years after Fiat has taken over Chrysler. And as far as I'm concerned, that's three years into the Jeeps being made cheaper and cheaper. Well, even though it's a smaller vehicle, you can see the gross weight stuff, 45, 75 pounds. They are not lightweight vehicles. But if you look under the hood, it's only got a little four cylinder engine. And you couple that with an automatic transmission, you gotta get that engine spinning pretty fast, high RPMs, before it starts getting any decent acceleration. But even though it's a small engine, you can see down here, there's not much working room. You gotta work on these things, they're still pretty hard to work on. They put it in transversely and there's not that much working room. Now this is an all wheel drive vehicle as you can see when we go under. It's got drive going to the rear and drive going to the front wheel. But as you can also see here, it's not that high above the ground. So even though it's a Jeep four wheel drive, it's not really a serious off road vehicle. It's not high up in the ground. It's more of an SUV with four wheel drive. As you can tell, it's got front doors and back door so it's pretty much SUV styled. It has a kind of smallish below average room in the back seat and it's got a trunk that's a smallish size. The Toyota Matrix my wife has has got a lot more space than this trunk has and it's got a low slung luggage carrier on the top but it's so small there really isn't all that much that you could hook up there. This is a high-end one so it has a video display Navigation camera, HIAD headlights, and leather seats, a Sirius radio, moonroof, and superficially it looks like a good vehicle, but it's made by Fiat Chrysler, and there's where the problem lies. If you want a long-term reliable SUV, this is not the vehicle for you. Customer line that bought them invariably had problems. Some bought them new and had problems from the get-go with electronics, with transmission failure, right from brand new. Others bought them secondhand and saved a whole bunch of money. There's no arguing that. I've seen people buy them when they have 25,000 miles on them and they pay well under 50% of the original sticker price, but there's a reason for that. The quality just is not there. No, even though this only has a four cylinder engine, it's still pretty much a gas hog. In town, this car gets about 18 to 19 miles a gallon because it's heavy and that's four wheel drive. But at the same time, it doesn't have that great acceleration. I've seen V6 engines that get better gas mileage than this that have much more horsepower. And let's face it, the modern Jeeps are nothing like the old Willys. These things aren't going to last forever. You might get a Toyota Matrix that's about this size. They might last you three, four hundred thousand miles easy. These things, you're lucky if you ever get anything over a hundred thousand miles out of them. The compasses, they were basically made because they wanted to cash in on a Jeep name and make a small SUV that they can sell. But that is such a cramped market with such great vehicles already there. A wise person, they'd think twice before they plop their money down for one of these things. Just understand for that price, you're getting a lot lower quality too. I mean, if you want to get something, you always want to have a Jeep and you're driving four or 5,000 miles a year, hey, it might last a few years. But the Fiat technology that's put into these things, not known for longevity in the least. These things, as I said, they don't have the acceleration. And this is the bigger engine. This is the 2.4. They make a two liter that's even slower. And with all the weight that it's pulling around with the four by four system, it just is not a zippy vehicle to drive around. And at the same time, it gets pretty crappy gas mileage. So you're really not getting the best of either world. It isn't particularly fast and it doesn't get good gas mileage. It kind of makes me wonder what their engineering design was behind this thing. Other than just another one of Fiat Chrysler's idea of, oh, let's make something that looks cute, see if we can rush it out and sell it to people. Now they are selling a reasonable amount. The first ones that they made, they only sold 60,000 of them, but 2018 they sold 160,000 of them. So they're banking on a Jeep name. It's paid them back some dividends. They're selling them. But really, the quality isn't there. If you're looking for a long-term, small SUV 
that you can drive without having a lot of expensive repairs as they age. And believe me, the transmission repairs on these things, they're expensive and they're also common as the vehicles get older. And when you look under the hood, you can see low quality. Look, here's the top. You can see that's all corroding. We'll go to the back. Look how all these nuts and bolts are all rusted and corroded. And that's on a vehicle that only has 30,000 miles. It could use better made metal. Could have better coatings on it. There's no arguing that. It's a big reason I'd never advise one of my customers to buy one of these if they really value their money over time. Now when you take in consideration all the Italian designs and even actual Italian parts that they're starting to use in these Jeeps, the quality is nothing like they were back in the 50s or 60s or even the 70s. As the saying goes, what's in the name? In this case, the name Jeep often works to sell things to people. Selling over 160,000 of them last year, it seems to be working. Let's say you bought a loaded 2018 four-wheel drive. You're talking about $29,000. And if you are comparing that to an all-wheel drive Toyota RAV4 the same year, that thing's about $38,000. So this thing's almost $10,000 cheaper than a Toyota. And yes, it is a cheaper made vehicle. There's no arguing that, which is one of the reasons that they can sell them. Price matters a lot. But if you're looking for long-term reliability, low cost of upkeeping it, maintaining it, I'd stay far away from this Jeep Compass. Range Rovers. I was talking about money pits. Well, but he's got some nibbling problems with the transmission code. He's losing a little coolant. So let's check it out. There's no doubt in their beautiful vehicles. And they're very comfortable. A lot of leg room here. And it's got a decent little trunk, which of course, when you put the seats down, you can actually carry quite a bit. And even though it spent its winters in Rhode Island, not particularly rusty. We'll look under here. You can see, still pretty clean. Where they sealed it. Now you can see the bare steel's got a little rust, but it's solid. It's not rusting out by any means. They certainly perfected that. But he's worried because he had a friend with the same year, 2013. And the guy got a $13,000 transmission done. He's paid for a special warranty. Luckily he did and had the transmission replaced. He's starting to get some tranny codes. So what we're going to do is scan it. Take it for a road trip. So we got it plugged in. We'll do an auto scan. Got to remember to turn on the key first. While we're waiting, we can see they're comfy, beautiful cars are riding around. There's no arguing that. We'll do an automatic scan. There's 40 things it's scanning. As usual, it's a Range Rover. And you can see there's a lot of failures. The powertrain control module has 30 failures, but you can see there's failures all over the place, and we're only halfway through. Granted, some of these things are nitpicky stuff, but it's pretty typical with any Range Rover, basically any English vehicle. Lay your model ones, you hook up a scan tool, you're going to get codes coming out the wazoo. Electricity in English? Nah, maybe they should have stayed in the dark ages with candles. Scan, you can see failure, 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 failure. Failure 8 failures, failure, failure 12 failures. I mean, we could spend a lot of time going through this. Start with a power turn control module. Diagnose trouble codes. And there's a whole list of them. 30 of these babies. Lost communication with restraint. Gear shift lever position sensor. Multiple sensor correlating correctly. Throttle position sensor. Lost communication with ABS. Look at this. These things are just total insanity. The amount of invalid data received from transmission control module. There are so many codes. Basically, the only thing we can do is erase them, take them for a road test, see if any obvious ones come back. <laughs> but that's what you got to deal with with these things. They're over complex electronically. It's just a level of insanity. Make your head spin. One of the big reasons I tell people not to buy them. Go back and we'll erase them before we go on a road test. Transmission control module has one failure. Who's worried about the transmission? High speed CAN communication bus. So it's a communication failure with the transmission. It often happens on these things. They are so complex. You got a bus line. It does low speed, mid range, and high speed data all flying on the same line. It's just enough to make your head spin. We're gonna erase that too. Just for kicks, we'll look at the body control module. It's got seven failures. Tire pressure, 
sensors wacky high beam circuit wacky lost communication with engine control module slash powertrain control module a lost communication with transmission control module so yeah we got communication problems with the transmission doesn't mean there's necessarily a transmission problem itself it's the computer system that activates it that's very complex now the all-terrain control module has to do with transmission too so we'll check that system out lost communication with engine control module our train control module lost con communication with transmission control module with differential invalid data like i said you could spend a week of sundays analyzing one of these things with all these codes and all the insanity if you're willing to drive a car with lights on and it runs good enough and you don't care but if you're a fanatic about your car being in tip-top shape you don't want to buy one of these things what we're going to do is this we're going to go back to the main data okay we're going to erase everything not to erasing everything we're going to take it for a road test clearing all the codes now all the codes are gone and we will take it for a road test in reverse with its little electronics got a backup camera we took it for a good ride now reasonably smooth riding they're fun to drive that's how they sell them they're beautiful looking just like jaguars it's not just a coincidence that it's jaguar land rover company <laughs> neither of which are known for making vehicles that don't break down all the time and cost a fortune to fix when they do but we're going to take it for a good spin see if the transmission acts up at all and just look at the codes once we're done taking it for a drive now there's one thing about driving around in a range rover in rhode island here is you don't feel out of place there's so many millionaires around here you can join the crew hey i should go the other way and go to the polo grounds i can sit right in with the polo grounds with my range rover evoke now i'm driving around it seems to shift perfectly fine i don't feel any wiggles or gyrations mechanically it seems in good shape but there's so many computer modules and control units on us that make your head spin so we're driving the heck out of the thing and we'll see if any codes pop up after we drive it a while okay i have to say they're comfortable they're fun to drive and i guess if you want to impress people how rich you are that you don't care how much it costs to fix it maybe you'd love driving one of these things around well let's see if any codes came back while we drove let's do the automatic scan again see what happens so far it's all clean look nothing 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 that's one failure we'll check that later in the heating and air conditioning but i mean what do you expect no transmission codes the gear shift module B does have a code. So let's look at that. And it says intermittent invalid data received from the body control module. Invalid data received from the engine control module. Invalid data received from the gear shift control module. Okay, so that's the only thing that really popped up. Showing that, yes, there is some type of wiring problem or module problem in the transmission system. And the gear shift module would be the thing that would be highly suspect because it's what popped up first a lot of those other codes were historical codes somebody never erased the gear shift module came back it doesn't look like there's any kind of serious problem in the transmission itself there's a special battery in there for the gear shift that can raise it up and down yes i'm not making this up this is a level of insanity these english have gone to and he did replace that battery and he said when he did it acted a little bit better than it did before when you get a level of complexity like that any little thing can act up he did say that when the transmission did act up it didn't act up on me but when it did on him it used to be that he could shut the car off start it back up it would go perfectly fine which shows that it's obviously some type of computer module malfunction or wiring malfunction and now he said sometimes no it won't so just out of curiosity if he wants to spend some money and get a gear shift module and put it in it might solve his problem that he's got but realize one thing it has to be recalibrated if you install a new one but there's only one problem do you want to guess with a thousand dollar plus module <laughs> it's a thousand and eight dollars just for that little module itself you can't buy them at AutoZone you can only get them from Range Rovers <laughs> and they stick it to you on these parts there are scores of these modules if you added all the parts together the car would probably be a million dollars if you bought it piece by piece so realize this about these things they don't come cheap and they aren't easy to diagnose either but the good news is the transmission itself is mechanically in great shape <laughs> <laughs> it's just all the computer crap that controls it that has some problems with it in the case of this hey guy got a good deal on it he's put 70,000 miles on it i would say it's probably time to 
pass it on by so he doesn't have to deal with he's talking about getting a nice Toyota he said the only problem is you can keep the Toyotas more than 10 years and the problem is where well, you're gonna be driving a Toyota for 10 years so he's kind of bought into this image thing too me I don't care about image <laughs> I'd get the Toyota and say back in the day when he's things were real trucks especially the ones with diesel engines yeah they could run a long time but there's a limited lifespan on this realize also this thing's only got a two liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine in it eventually from the weight of the vehicle that will wear out it's fast but eventually it is going to wear out I was surprised at how fast it was then I look under the hood it's got a two liter four-cylinder turbo engine goes zoom zoom but when that goes, the sky's the limit. And this thing runs so good now, he can probably get some really good money for it and just say, okay, I've had my experience with British products. Now it's time to move on to the Japanese where I won't have to spend any money and think about it breaking down the line and worry about insane things like gear shifts that can move up and down. Do we really need such things? I don't think so. Here's a 2020 Lincoln Navigator. Now it's only got 20,000 miles, but that's totally believable. People trade luxury cars in all the time. But he did have to pay quite a bit for it. He had to pay 67 grand. But with that small amount of mileage, this thing is the luxury edition. It was over $91,000 new. So, I mean, right off the bat, with that little bit of mileage, if you want to get one of these, follow his lead. <laughs> At least get one that's a couple years old. If you're going to save almost $30,000, why not? <laughs> you see, it's a rainy day, but it's slowed down a little. So first, we'll look at the outside. And of course, yeah, you know, it's a beautiful SUV. This is a loaded job. It's got the old little step that opens and closes lots of leg room and as we look at the third row seats they're real third row seats the people don't feel like they're cramped in they can look out the windows when they're sitting there there's a lot of space in these and of course you got your air conditioning on the top a phenomenal stereo system really nice leather seats you opens with a kick of your leg now of course the trunk is tiny when the seats are back for the three row seats but you know when you flip these things down you get a lot more room and like everything they're electric here they go they're flipping down you don't even have to pull on the things you know of course that one would go down further if you pull the seat up but all kinds of space once you empty it down if you want to carry things with this so we'll put them back up here. Second row isn't powered. Those you have to pull up yourself. <laughs> okay, I got a gripe here. The second rows go down with power, but not up. What's wrong here? Why didn't they make it go the whole way? Hey, you're paying 90 something grand new. At least make them go by themselves. Come on now. The old ones are tremendous gas hogs. Yet, he got 22.3 miles a gallon driving here in this big monstrosity because under the hood is the V6 EcoBoost and it's hooked up to that 10 speed automatic transmission that has three overdrives in it. So for a gigantic vehicle like this, that's really good gas mileage. Now, from my experience so far, I bet this one shifts pretty good because it's a 2020. Now, some of the early 10 speeds, they were always hunting for gears. People didn't like them. They weren't happy with them. But we'll see when we road test it, see how it shifts. But from my experience of previous ones, the 2020s didn't have the lag problems that the earlier ones did. So we'll go inside and take a look and hook our computer up. Now, while we're letting this thing hook up here, it's really nice set up. A nice big screen. All kinds of space. And I like this. It's got two armrests, so you don't have to hog it. You get one, and the passenger gets one. And check it out. Look at the back seat. The back seat controls. You got all your own controls back there, too. It's Charlie, it's a luxury vehicle. There's no arguing that. But really, for 90 some thousand dollars, you better get some of this stuff. <laughs> As I said, it doesn't have much. It's got 20,508 miles on it. But we're going to check out with a computer here. Now, her brother who bought the thing, he didn't pay for it. He just went and picked it up. He's got a blue driver. He watches my videos. He did a pretty good inspection of it. So I'm sure it's not a lemon at all. But we're going to go really deep with this to see if anything's a little bit wacky. Because if you remember, I had a guy 
bought a very expensive Toyota Sequoia and it turns out that it had been wrecked because the mirror didn't work and then I could see the door was a slightly different color and he didn't know that I figured that out so let's see what's gonna happen here all right it reads the VIN number it knows everything navigator eco boost gas turbocharged direct injection 3.5 liter it's got everything so we shall do a full analysis of it we'll do a full scan and here we go realize it does have this gigantic sunroof i mean look how far back it goes it's truly panoramic you, know? you want to go hunting comets at night <laughs> see a meteor shower well hey stay in air conditioned comfort look out the roof everybody can see it except for the people in the third row they're not going to get a very good view they'll have to go outside to look and when it's done 46 systems 46 systems now there's three tiny faults and they'll probably be squirrely things well, let's see what they are we have occupant classification mode a crazy communication code with seat controller module yeah i see this all the time with all those crazy insane codes everything's so computerized there's so many modules so we'll just erase that and of course we'll check it when we're all done after we road test it body control module it's got a fault too means doing a bunch of tests by itself now that's the thing about fords there's a lot of it even beat the horn <laughs> there's a lot of automatic testing that this thing could do and here's the code crazy communication code extra enhanced exterior lighting system code well we'll erase that one too there's one more image processing module a like i said there's all kinds of modules on this thing we'll see what that code is it's doing a bunch of tests turning things on and off i wonder if it'll honk the horn this time it says vision system camera has a code we're driving and parking it's got a little bit of code well we'll do what we did with the other ones we'll erase it and see if any of them come back after we road test now we'll start it up so we can get some data on the machine for live data but while we're waiting for that not only does it have heated and ventilated seats but it also has a driver's massaging seat there's the heated seat there's the air conditioning seat same thing on the passenger side i can feel my butt getting cold drive modes here we have normal normal four by four this is a four-wheel drive vehicle slippery if it starts sliding outside deep conditions deep snow you can turn the automatic stop start off you can turn your parking assist off an immense amount of technology in this $91,000 car when it was new but still with the technology I gotta say it's laid out pretty well look heated seats there's your temperature to go up or down for there your menu bars there so you can play around up here gives you all the additional climate controls simple so you can just touch them and make them go you get tired of it turn it off and for those of you like me who collect everything kind of like a rat's nest right big old glove box you can put a bunch of crap in the glove box if you want you don't see it when it's hidden like that but now we're gonna look at live data as you can see there's an awful lot of it this is just the computer data here calibration data illegal operation code counter idle time all kinds of stuff and that's just the computer system now we're going to live data for the whole vehicle there's going to be an awful lot of data flying out at us this is after all an ecoboost v6 twin turbo gasoline direct inject engine with a 10 speed electronically controlled transmission there's a lot of computer hardware and software in this baby a lot of data here and i do mean a lot of data we'll start at the top and just to show you how much there is La, 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 la. We're still in the A's. La, la, la. We're still in the A's. We're still in the A's. We're in the B's now. La, 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 la. And yes, now we're in the D's. Look at that. Look at the information that this thing will throw out to a mechanic. And that's why you can't let any clown work on one of these things. It just keeps going and going and going. Finally, there it is all of it and to do a quick review backwards we'll go super fast look at all that info Whee! that's some obvious things the equivalent ratio bank one one is perfect it's almost there it's perfect now it's a little bit off 1.99 pretty close and the other side bank two is the same thing one is perfect 101 so it's running pretty well perfect in these modern cars you actually get the fuel pressure on the machine you don't have to hook up a cage information on the grill shutter these have grills in the front of the car that will open for more efficiency close 
to warm them up more. I mean, these are extremely complex systems, and anybody who works on them's got to be able to get this data if they break. Hot wastegate eight servo compensation strategy. Power's reduced to prevent overheating. No, because it's not overheating. Tests are done for the injectors. No fault in any of them. All the way down to six. Information on the variable timing on the intake and the exhaust camshaft. The fuel pressure is almost perfect. The low side fuel pressure desired is 486, and that's 490, 480. That's really close. You know? well, I could spend a few months explaining all this stuff, but I'm just showing you. It's phenomenally interesting, all the technology that's in these things. Which is one reason I tell people, if you buy one of these things, make sure you keep full insurance you get in a wreck it's gonna cost a fortune to repair all this computer stuff do not drive one of these unless you have full insurance because it'll just blow your mind what it can cost to repair one of these if it gets in a wreck and the electronic systems start to get crumpled and start shorting each other out but let's take it for a spin and see how it runs it's all buttons now so you push your reverse and you can see you get all kinds of views there's the backup camera, but next to it, you got a side camera. You can play with that too, but it's real handy so you don't run into things. You can see our pole. We're going by the pole. There's the pole. And as you can see, it's got a pretty good heads up. Shows how fast you're going right in front. Mileage of gas that's left. Temperature outside. The time. Hey, he's got it in four wheel high, so I don't want four wheel. Switch it back to normal here. Now it's just normal. Get a little bit better gas mileage too. High riding vehicles got a good ride. I mean, it's big, heavy, large vehicles, so they're gonna take the bumps better. You do have to say, we're driving at a little slow speed because there's a turtle in front of us. And at this speed, when I cruise a little, it can feel a little kind of hunting for gear in the transmission. I can still feel it in this 10 speed. It is a 2020. I've been in the new ones and they are a bit better than this. Now, if I switched it, into a different mode we'll see what happens let's switch it to 4x4 four four and see what happens well now the hunting is gone it's not doing the hunting often when you shift the modes the hunting will go away 4x4 four four has got a little bit stiffer to it now since it's raining let's put it on slippery see how that does it's not slipping and it's not hesitating either let's see if it really works on a wet slippery day now, there's nobody behind us that i can see yet so there we go is it sliding? No, it's not sliding. And it's accelerating quite well. I gotta say, the system works quite well. Now, you can see we're going like 56 now. We'll see what passing is like. It's getting up and going pretty good. And it isn't sliding at all in this rain. And now we've caught up to the turtle that was in front of us, right up there. So I gotta slow down. Now I got no choice. <laughs> but I do have to say I'm impressed now. This is auto stop start which you can turn off now it tells you it's been deactivated But interestingly enough when I have it in the slippery driving condition It didn't shut itself off. So I guess when it's slippery They don't want to shut it off to keep start and stop and which of course would be more dangerous The funny thing watch now we're on a single yellow with Dots on the side and then it warned us it's vibrating the steering wheel, but it didn't do it over a double yellow line. Obviously, the software isn't that great. Hey, a double yellow line is more dangerous than a single yellow line, yet it only did the vibrate and warning with the single, not with the double. Because as you can see here, there's the single one again, and it makes the red light and it makes the steering wheel vibrate. But it didn't work with a double, and that's weird. Slippery four-wheel drive automatic works good. We got a twin turbo here. We step on it in the rain, it's not slipping or sliding, and it's also not really losing the acceleration. It's still really quick. I gotta say, that system's working really well. But now, see, there we go, double yellow line, and it didn't wobble it. It just doesn't work on a double yellow line. Maybe that's something to do with the rain and hard. I don't know, I'd just say I would never trust my life to one of those systems. Keep your eye on the road, keep your hands on the wheel. A really luxurious SUV. Now, 91 grand, 60 something's much better, if you ask me. But, doesn't have that many miles on it. You got a lot of bells and whistles at a level of complexity, as you saw with my scan tool, that would blow your socks off. So, <laughs> if you're looking for something this big, one, do like he did. Buy one used and save quite a bit of money. And two, make sure you keep insurance on the thing, cause if you get in a wreck, all that electronics, it's gonna cost a fortune to fix if the wiring gets bent and backed up. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!